Okay, uh, first thing we have to do before we set up any Rockwell software is we have some prerequisites. Um, one thing I like to do is turn off the uh, user control, the user access control, uh, because it's a real pain in the butt to set up software. So go to uh, control panel and go to user accounts and family safety. and user accounts and change user account control settings change user account control settings right here and turn this off normally it's right here uh, and it keeps asking you do you want to install this do you want to install that do you want to allow this and we don't really need this user control um, we know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with Rockwell software. And so I turn that off. Uh, that way, it, especially with older programs, uh, sometimes it won't allow um, the OCXs and the DLL files to install um, because it can't register the class. And so if you turn this off, this allows the software to install and it doesn't bother you with those nuisance uh, dialogues. So click OK, turn it off, never notify, and hit OK. All right, uh, next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we got a password when we're setting up these files, uh, especially when we get into Factory Talk View Studio. So make sure that if you're not an administrator, if you're not an administrator, uh, make sure that you uh, go in as the administrator you do this by doing control alternate delete control alternate and delete all at the same time you hold down on all three keys and you hit task manager or you can hit switch user so um, <coughs> and you can switch user or you can log off Log on as administrator with a capital A D M I N I S T R A T O R. And if you didn't put in a password, put in a password uh, for the administrator. Uh, we do it by the same way going into control panel and user accounts and family safety and user accounts. Okay, uh, if, if you haven't created a password, it'll say create a password. You need a password. And once you create this password, uh, in other words, you can put in current password and then password. And I just put in lowercase password because nobody's getting on my computer. And as a hint, I put in standard. That way I know the lowercase password and password. Okay. Uh, once you do that, you can go into, um, you can click on here and say net pl whiz net pl whiz and you'll see this up here net pl whiz and what you do is you can auto log in uh, if that's what you want to do is auto log in so you don't have to put in a password you select your username and then you uncheck this users must enter a username and password to use this computer uncheck that then hit apply and be sure it says your username then enter your password mine would be password and confirm the password password and hit OK and then hit OK and now you'll auto log in once you do that you'll auto log in and you never have to enter your password again it'll just come in okay I'm set up as an administrator so I'm good to go all right, next thing we want to do is we want to make sure Internet Information Services is installed. So again, we'll go to Control Panel and we'll go to Programs. And um, we got Turn Windows Features on or off. You can just go into Programs and see it. And it'll be on the side, turn Windows features on or off, either way you want to do it. 
couple things we want to do. We want to do internet information services. So we want to check internet information services. Uh, we want our web management console under web management tools with IIS management console. Then under the World Wide Web security, we got basic authentication, performance is static, health, just leave it all default, uh, common documents, except add this Web Dave Publishing under common HTTP features. This is unchecked by default, so check that and say Web Day Publishing. Okay, and let's take this, collapse it. We'll add the Internet Information Services Hostable Web Core. And one thing we want to make sure is this Microsoft.NET Frameworks 3.51 is checked. Make sure that is checked. We don't need this uh, HTTP activation. Um, but make sure the frameworks is checked. That adds dot frameworks two, which we have to have for our programs. It adds uh, dot network three, which we don't use, and three point five one, which we need. Uh, afterwards, we'll have to add dot net four and dot net one point one. So install those. Hit OK, and it'll download the features it needs and update you. Now IIS, Internet Information Services, is used for our HMI program later and it wants it to be installed to do distributive and networked um, applications. So uh, we won't be doing distributive network applications, but we will be doing network and local applications. Okay, we're good to go there, we're set. As you see, I've already installed .NET Frameworks 1.1. It's important, we have to install that. Uh, you can just download the Microsoft .NET Frameworks package and I got the full installs for you there on the website uh, at learncontrolsystems.com go to PLCs and install and then under your Windows operating systems you'll see the .NET package you can download and install and we install .NET 4 and .NET 4 is used for the B1 archiver and the activation tool you have to have .NET 4 installed to use the uh, Windows activation, the Microsoft Toolkit Auto KMS. So it has to be installed first. Okay, now we've got all our prerequisites squared away. What we want to do is download the virtual floppy drive. And wherever you download it, just copy that, extract it, and copy that. And then put it in your root folder. So mine's Windows 7 86. Windows 7 86. Uh, you can call yours whatever you want. This is Windows 7 Pro 32 bit. That's what all of our software runs in 32 bit. Soft logics and emulator will only run in a 32 bit operating system. So paste it in. You see, I've already got it pasted in here. Paste it into your directory. Just right click and paste. And I'll say yes. We'll go over top of it and copy and replace okay then double click that and go into the folder and you see this virtual floppy drive win exec vfd win exec virtual floppy drive win exec now i've already got my activation files on here but i'm going to show you how to install the activation files for windows 7 it's a little different than the video for XP. Uh, everything has to be done with run as administrator or it just will not install. If I double click this and I say open, well I say driver and I'm going to stop and uninstall. Uh, if I try to install, 
well normally it won't install I've already installed it uh, we turned off our we turned off our uh, user authorization so that may allow us to do it but run as an administrator especially if you got on user uh, access control and then you got to run as an administrator and what we do is click auto and install and start start the driver click on association be sure you pick image we need image we need an image file and then hit apply then hit drive zero and we have to create a drive so we got two drives drive zero and drive one we'll pick drive zero and you'll notice there's no floppy drive just computer and C drive here I'm going to change this drive letter this drive letter change on drive zero and it says none I will pick a and OK. And there it is. We got a floppy drive. Floppy disk A. Now click on Open Create. Open Create. And we're going to browse to our directory that we have uh, under Windows 7 Pro 32 bit. Go to Virtual Floppy Drive and go to activation disk for all Rockwell software and just pick one I got several copies here there's a couple copies up here but just pick activation master disk all products image and click on that and click open and then click open again and here see it's in the image file set and open it's not that confusing it's pretty simple okay now we got a, something in our drive now if we click on a drive we'll see we got these files in here and this is the activation files we're going to use the EV move W that's the Windows exact it's the easiest one it's e this is really for DOS EV move is for DOS EV move W is for Windows right click it and say run as an administrator run as an administrator. It may not work right if you don't run as an administrator. It may say uh, an error uh, writing to the drive. So run as an administrator. We're going to move from E, I mean uh, A. We're going to move from drive A to drive C, Windows 7 Pro 32, and hit OK. So you're moving activation from drive A to drive C hit OK and you'll see I've already got 20 on here already but just click on this you'll, you'll have nothing this will be blank this will be blank click on this RSI master disk master keys master with a serial number and click on that and hit edit it says moving one right now edit selected and put in 20 it doesn't matter we don't save this disk so you get these you can move as many as you want we'll probably only use about six or seven uh, of these uh, activation files but so you got plenty so just put 20 on there is fine 20 licenses it's an activation file for a master disk license and then you just click on this move now you selected that and you're moving 20 you clicked on it and you added it you said 20 you're moving 20 and you're going to move it from source a drive a to destination drive c keys one licenses 20 and just click move and it'll say rsi master master keys master here's our serial number and we move status the move status says 20 moves successful and we moved from drive a keys one move to C licenses move 20 and okay now you get your license now you can install your uh, software um, RS links the communication software will run as a uh, in grace period for seven days without it 
but the SoftLogix PLC will not start up unless it finds an activation file. It'll just say start up and say activation not found and shut back down. So you have to have your activation files in first before you install your software. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, we got our activation. Uh, next will be uh, install your RS Lynx communication software, then your PLC. Uh, which would be SoftLogix 5800. It's a real PLC in software with real Ethernet. I recommend the SoftLogix PLC over the RS emulator. The emulator works okay, but it doesn't have real Ethernet. It doesn't have Ethernet adapter, and it doesn't control real I.O. Uh, when we put in this simulated I.O., it acts like a real local card in the PLC rack uh, in both of them, but SoftLogix will allow you to control real PLC hardware if you get some, and it has real Ethernet. <coughs> so you can actually send messages back and forth in the same rack. We can put up to six controllers and six Ethernet cards and multiple simulator uh, input-output, 32-bit simulator input-output cards. Um, but the Ethernet will allow you to act like you have two different racks, even though the controllers are in the same rack. And it'd be like, uh, we got a, a PLC on the west side of the plant and a PLC on the east side of the plant, and we want to talk back and forth. We can actually talk over the Ethernet rather than through the back plane of the rack, like it's a, just one controller. It'll act like two PLCs. And this will allow us to do messaging, and consumed and produced tags, which allows data to flow back and forth uh, almost instantaneously and without any intervention. Okay, uh, we're ready to set up our software. That's it.